Reverend is the Most Reverend Pablo Virgilio S. David Didi, Bishop of Caloocan. Thanks, O Lord, the just one rejoices. How greatly your salvation makes him glad. You have granted him his soul's desire. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness that for those who glory in you as their creator and judge and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Nahum. See, upon the mountains there advances the bearer of good news, announcing peace. Celebrate your feast, O Judah. Fulfill your vows. For nevermore shall you be invaded by the scoundrel. He is completely destroyed. The Lord will restore the vine of Jacob, the pride of Israel. Though ravagers have ravaged them and ruined the tendrils. Woe to the bloody city, all lies, full of plunder, whose looting never stops. The crack of the wheat, the rumbling sounds of wheels, Horses a gallop, chariots bounding, cavalry charging, the flame of the sword, the flash of the spear, the many slain, the heaping corpses, the endless bodies to stumble upon. I will cast filth upon you, disgrace you, and put you to shame. Till everyone who sees you runs from you, saying, Nineveh is destroyed. Who can pity her? Where can one find any to console her? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is I who do to deal death and give life. It is I who deal death death and give life close at hand is the day of their disaster and their doom is rushing upon them surely the lord shall do justice for his people on his servants he shall have pity it is i who deal death and give life learn then that i i alone am god and there is no god besides me it is i who bring both death and life, I who inflict wounds and heal them. It is I who deal death and give life. I will sharpen my flashing sword, and my hand shall lay hold of my cleaver. With vengeance I will repay my foes and requite those who hate me. It is I who deal death and give life. Let us honor the Holy Gospel. 
Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his glory, and then he will repay each according to his conduct. Amen, I say to you. There are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our gospel today is what they call a paradox. I checked the meaning in the dictionary and I found this definition. Paradox is a figure of speech in which a statement appears to contradict itself but is actually communicating an inherent truth. It means if you see only the contradiction, you do not yet see the truth that it is trying to state. Here is the paradox from the gospel today. Jesus says, the one who saves his life will lose it, while the one who loses his life will save it. The statement indeed seems to contradict itself because in normal language, you either save it or lose it. How can you lose it if you save it? And how can you save it if you lose it? What is Jesus trying to tell us here? Obviously, he is not using normal language, but what we call figurative language. He is actually explaining to them what it means to be his disciple. But he is also talking about the mystery of human life itself. Let us use a more ordinary analogy to get what Jesus means. For example, bread. Bread is meant to be broken and eaten if it is to serve its purpose. If you keep it, you lose it. Why? It is not meant to be kept. It will just spoil and rot after a few days. Now, if you lose it by consuming it, you have kept its purpose. Another example, a candle. The candle's purpose is to give light. If it does not give light, it does not fulfill its purpose. But if it is to give light, it has to be burned until it burns out. By burning out, it is able to keep its purpose of giving light. 
Jesus is saying basically the same thing about human life. It is not just bread that gets stale, you know. People too. How can we achieve our life's purpose if we live it only for ourselves? If we are unwilling to be broken and shared and consumed like bread? No wonder Jesus found bread most expressive of his own life's mission and purpose. And the words have been immortalized in the Eucharist. This is my body which will be given up for you. People are like candles too. In my younger activist days, I remember, I received a poster with the following saying, He who wishes to give light must endure burning. St. Paul says basically the same thing in Romans chapter 14, verse 7. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. Jesus gives his disciples a new and a rather simplified commandment to love one another as he loves us. And in John chapter 15, verse 13, he explains what that means. He says, there is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This reminds me also of the parable of the salt dal. Ang manikang asin, the salt dal. The story goes, once there was a salt dal that wanted to know who she was. She went around asking, but no one could tell her. Until one day, she saw the ocean and asked the water, Who am I? The ocean water replied, Come to me and you will know. As the salt doll stepped into the water, she began to dissolve. And before the rest of her fell into the ocean, she cried out and she said, Now I know who I am. Brothers and sisters, there are so many people in this world who live their lives not knowing who they are and what they live for. I cannot think of a more lonely life than a life without purpose. Some people get so obsessed about nothing but power and popularity for themselves or profit and gain. And later they wake up and realize how empty their lives have been. Someone once asked a friend who went to church very often in order to pray. The friend said, What do you gain from praying every day anyway? Are you not just wasting your time? The friend replied, You want to know what I gain? Honestly, nothing. But let me tell you what I have lost since I learned to pray. I've lost my fears and my insecurities. And I have also lost my arrogance and my selfishness. Now tell me, do you call that a loss? Jesus would call that a gain. That is what paradox is about. 
Let me now end with the best example of paradoxical language. The conclusion of the prayer of St. Francis. You know that prayer, Lord, make me an instrument of peace. The conclusion says, for it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Let us now take up the cross of Christ each day as we walk in the footsteps of the Master. Let us call to God for the needs of our community and cast off the selfishness that keeps us apart from the Lord. In confidence, let us pray, Lord, give strength to your people. Lord, give strength to your people. That the Pope and our bishops may carry the cross of pastoral care and responsibility with selfless sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord give, give strength, strength to, to your people. people. That those who accepted the burden of public office may grow in the love of God through their responsible, sincere, and honest exercise of their duties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord give, give strength, strength to your people. That we may give wholehearted support in upholding the truth and in opposing the subtle influences of evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord give, give strength, strength to your people. That all Christians may find inspiration in the life and virtues of San Roque in selflessly tending to the needs of others, especially in times of crisis. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, give strength to your people. That the sick may find strength in the Lord, that in the midst of their illness, they may unite their sacrifice to the cross of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, give strength to your people. That those who suffered and died in faith may gain their heavenly reward. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, give strength to your people. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, receive the prayers of your pilgrim people who, like San Roque, seek to discover your will by walking in the footsteps of your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Your table with humble hearts, O Lord, the bread and wine, the fruits of the land and of the vine, transformed beneath the hands of your chosen priest, behold, we shall receive with open hearts, eternal life bestowed. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, 
in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and your servant, the Bishop of this diocese and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with our patron saint, San Roque, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we cannot receive the Lord sacramentally, let us pray the act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. I love you and desire to receive you in Holy Communion. At this moment, I cannot receive you in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Come then spiritually and dwell in my heart. I embrace you and unite myself totally to you. May I never be separated from you. Amen. deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oratio Imperata. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all these to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will now have a special blessing with the relic as we observe these days of preparation for the feast day of our beloved patron saint of the Diocese of Caloocan, San Roque. We ask the Lord to bless us and our families especially those who are sick and those in the front lines in the battle against the pandemic through his intercession. 
through the intercession of San Roque, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Dadala ng sakit ng katawan at ng kalulwa Hali kayo, tayo'y dumapit sa Kanya Kay San Roque, kay San Roque Ang tagapagligtas ng bawat karamdaman San Roque, o San Roque Ang awitin namin sa'yo'y papuri San Roque, o San Roque, sa gitna ng dusay kawang pintakasi. San Roque, o San Roque, ang awiti namin sa iyo'y papuri. San Roque, o San Roque, sa gitna ng dusay kawang pintakasi.